Greetings, Sia, and I hope you've had a glorious Christmas and that your voice isn't quite as scratchy as mine is. What's going on? Well, I think you need to understand the setup we have right now on the market because it's exceptionally unusual. And there is a whopping opportunity ahead of us in 2024. Most people will miss it and most people will also miss what's coming afterwards. Um, and I want you to understand it. That's really what the whole point here is always, is get you to a place where you can become a better investor, better informed investor, make better decisions, and maybe encourage you a little bit to push you beyond your comfort zone and encourage you to really learn how money actually works. That's kind of my mission here, to make a million people financially free. And let's get cracking. I've missed these live streams, I must say. I really have. I, I hope um, I'm not the only one. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, let's get cracking then. Before we do, I want to encourage you to join me live, literally in an hour. I'll be doing a live trading training. And I'm doing this one because a lot of you guys have been saying just before the holidays, hey, could you do one during this kind of low season and therefore, I said, all right, fine, I'll do it because I appreciate that a lot of you guys might be off work. You might have a little bit more time. Even if you are working, there might be a little bit less going on. So you might be able to join us here live in an hour at felixfriends.org slash webinar. Now, let's have a look at some real data. And I always show you the hard data so you can come to your own conclusions. It's not necessarily about my opinion or interpretation of that, but to allow you to actually have the data that banks get, right? Investment banks get all this data every single day and retailers, that's you and me, retail investors usually run around in the dark chasing something that's already uh, been happening. Um, right, so Goldman Sachs, the um, the bankers with the golden heart um, of ICE and, uh, and, you know, everything else, they predict that the U.S. economy isn't going to grow at the Bloomberg consensus of like 0.9% or at the Fed's consensus of 1.4%. No, Bloomberg's saying it's going to be like well, almost 2%. So they're basically saying next year, the US economy is going to grow to about 2%. And that is a massive beat to what everybody's expecting. And they're saying, well, People underestimated the U.S. economy in 2023. They'll do it again in 2024. And we can argue about where the GDP growth is going to come from. Is it the biggest debt pileup ever, ever accumulated by a government outside of COVID? Or is it is it actually the economy really sputtering to life? Well, we can, we can look into that. But it's an important thing to bear in mind because this obviously influences stock prices. But at the same time, the big banks are not really predicting much of a rally. Look at Goldman Sachs, 5,100 S&P at the end of the year. Where is it trading right now? SPX. It's trading at 4774. So what do they say? 5,100. Okay. So 5,100 minus 4774. That's 326 points over 4774. That's a 7%. That's a 7% increase, which is, <coughs> excuse my scratchy throat, which is not bad, but also isn't exactly glorious, right? Okay, too much talking. <coughs> no, excuse me. Did you try to do something about this? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Excuse me for coughing in your ear. That was not the intention. Um, we'll see how far we get, hey? Um, <coughs> um, these things should hopefully do the trick. No. <laughs> okay, this is going to be um, less words and more reading. Um, right, so we are at the moment in a position where 
exposure to U.S. equities is pretty high, which is a good thing. It means, <coughs> excuse me, guys, the market is reasonably well positioned. Now, at some point, that is going to come down again, and we're going to talk about that in a second. But we're not like we're not quite there yet, in my view. We've also had. <coughs> okay, this is really not conducive, is it? <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, I know, I know, coughing today. It's just this, the throat's been been sore today, which has not been helpful. Okay, so December has been the biggest inflow into the um, spy since 1993. That's pretty pretty massive, isn't it? And what does that mean? Well, it means obviously December was brilliant. It also means the Santa rally is likely to kick off today, by the way, because the Santa rally is something that happens the last five days of the year and the first two days of the year. So it's that seven day trading window, which is a pretty short one. And on this chart here, Christmas colored chart, you have in green, the positive Santa rallies and in red, the ones where people didn't believe in them. And eat that British tea, absolutely. And um, we'll, 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 we'll soldier on for a little bit here, okay? This, this won't be a long one. I won't talk to you for too long. But normally what happens is that the first half of the year, uh, half of December is pretty flat. And then you get this, this kind of whoosh effect here. And this is what seasonally happens in the last half of 2020, uh, last half of December. So we are expecting a very, very nice finish to the year if you look at seasonality alone. If you do get, however, a whopping <clears throat> end to December, what then happens is that January starts off slow. Surprise, surprise, because the market zigs and zags. And that's also what I'm looking at with beyond 2024 here. So there is one very, very good piece of news, however, for us who are going to invest in stocks in 2024. And it's this. In 2023, a trillion dollars, literally an entire trillion which is a staggering sum, moved into money markets. Now, what the heck are money markets? Money market funds are debt funds, so government debt generally. And they went into that because people like me have been shouting off the rooftops for a year, buy government debt, you're going to make a lot of money. And um, people who did have, and most of them are probably now exiting those trades. So where is that trillion dollars going to go? Well it's actually making a nice profit. And it's therefore not only growing, but it's going to try and find the next big return, which you would likely expect it to be a circulating back into stocks. So therefore, if you compare that to the entire inflows into stocks in 2023, <coughs> which were 152 billion, we have a potential of about a trillion dollars plus um, in 2024. Now, I'm not saying it's all going to flow into stocks, but there is certainly plenty of ammunition out there to make 2024 a glorious gold-plated year. And if you look at the inflows into the stock market generally here, let me put a line in here at 200 billion. That's a pretty exceptional year. Um, this was, this was uh, the uh, Biden, Powell, <laughs> um, you know, stimulus saga of COVID. Uh, that's that was an unusual one. One, but but typically in in most years you get that sort of hundred hundred fifty billion inflow um, with rates going down as quickly as we would expect them to. You should see a huge amount of money piled into stocks. Which stocks? Well. Honestly, probably the big ones. And to some extent, the non-profitable tech for the people who are a little bit more, uh, um, looks like a bunch of dancing caterpillars. Yes, it's the amount of inflows you get into equities in a year. Interesting chart, isn't it? Um, so 
you also have, and this is also good news, you have profit expectations that are actually going up. So uh, in, in the long run, earnings per share, profits that is, per share, um, drive the stock market. So if they go up, it's a good thing. And they are actually going up. They are going up quite nicely, especially on the tech front. So that's, again, supportive for a great 2024. So what's with the, what's with the uh, scary story then? Well, 2024 could genuinely be a glorious year for investors. The question really, I think, to ask yourself is, what are you going to do differently to benefit from it? Because if you look at 2023, 2023 was the 12th best year since 1980, when greed was still good on Wall Street. Um, so therefore, it was just a great year. It was a great year for, for, for markets. It was fairly hard to not make money in 2023. And um, the question is, how do you do it better? Now, if you wanted to be, say, an NFL player, now you might argue, okay, I'm too old or too short or too something. I'm, 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 just take that out of the equation for a moment. Say like you are physically in your prime and you could be. What would you do? Well, you'd probably join a team. You'd get a coach. The team would probably have a coach. You might get personal, private coaches. You'd learn about nutrition and you'd exercise and you'd train and, you know, you'd treat your body like a temple. Um, that's typically what you do, right? And you'd practice and do this all the time. Say if you wanted to be a great chef, what would you actually do? Well, you'd probably go to chef school, wouldn't you? I mean, you could maybe try and learn it on your own, but you'd probably want to go to chef school. And if you wanted to, say, restore classic cars, what would you do? Well, probably can't really go to classic car school, but you'd find a club, you'd find people who are doing it and you'd learn from them or a great mechanic or something like that. And you'd you'd learn and practice and emulate, right? But um, what would you do if you got this guy? This is Winston. Um, when I got this guy, I got um, three dog trainers, stuck with one in the end, because I didn't know what to do with the dog. And, and now he's the most well-behaved, happy hound um, I've come across, really, in a long time. So, okay, dogs, yes. But with money, most people think, figure it on your own. That's what I was taught. The parents said, yeah, just, you know, take the money to the bank, pretty much any old banker, and uh, hopefully you'll make 8% on average. And that was sort of it. I'm like, but given that we spend almost all of our waking life earning money, why do we spend almost no time at all managing it? And almost zero time really becoming amazing at managing it. We just think it's something we can't learn or we think it's something that we have a natural gift for and it can happen just by throwing darts at random stocks. That seems to be the process of most retail investors. And I want to encourage you to make 2024 the year where you're no longer doing that. And that would make me tremendously happy. Now, I'm not so vain yet <laughs> that I think I'm the only person in the world who can teach you that. Absolutely not. But I'd highly recommend you go out and you find somebody you can learn from to become a great money manager. Um, and it is a great scandal that you were not taught this at school. I agree. But that's never going to happen. Uh, Wall Street gives $3, bil $3 billion a year to uh, Washington's politician to make sure that that doesn't happen. And um, why? Because you were sitting ducks for, um, for Wall Street, right? That's just the way the industry likes it. So... If you look at 2023 being this glorious year that's has been, the follow-up year to a glorious year like 2023 is usually a plus 8% year, which is sort of, funnily enough, what I was taught to expect. But what happens after that? Well, if you look at a stock chart, you will have realized it does something a bit like this, right? And then it does something a bit like that, and then it does something a bit like that. Um, and I suspect we are... I don't know, somewhere around something like here. And I think we're going to go quite a bit higher. And then at some point, something's going to break and we're going to go lower. And 
the unfortunate thing is that what retail investors continue to do is that they buy up here and they sell down here. And the only people who really enjoy that are the brokers because they make money regardless. Um, but you basically hand over all your hard-earned cash to some bastard on Wall Street, which isn't really, probably not really why you went to work to start with, right? You you did it because you wanted to buy that house, look after your family and become financially free and actually do what you want to be doing with your life rather than commuting and sitting in a cubicle and sitting in pointless, mindless meetings that go on forever. So what I want to say to you is really like respect yourself and respect your money in 2024. If you did that, you'd make me tremendously happy. Um, you are super welcome to join me in literally 45 minutes for a live trading training. And I'm not saying everybody has to become a trader, but I think understanding the basics of it and the rules of it is important. I'll give it to you for free. And it will help you make better decisions because you have to get your eyes open to a whole world. And then you might be like, okay, that's one thing I could do. I sort of grasp the concept of that now. I know what the rules are that family offices use that manage millions of dollars or that funds use that manage millions of dollars. Um, and maybe that's for me, maybe it's not for me. But unless you actually come and join us for an hour life, you won't know. Having said that, if you um, think this guy with the cravat here is, is repellent, but you somehow uh, resonate with a message of becoming a great money manager yourself, then go out and find somebody who doesn't wear a cravat. And I, I, I'll salute you for, for, for doing that just the same. But seriously, 2024 should be the year where you no longer hope and wish and pray that your portfolio goes up and that the market doesn't crash because you actually have managed your system, you manage your risk, you know your investment strategy, and you know the trajectory and the path that you're going to be on, and you can enjoy it. And then the next step will be being able to live off your investments and, and really enjoying life. And, and, and I think you'll get a whole level of energy and enthusiasm for everything around you. So yeah, that's kind of my little um, post-Christmas pre-2024 message to me, uh, to you rather. Um, we've got a couple of days left in the year. And um, yeah, seriously, money matters. Most arguments, most trouble in life for people you know, somehow revolves around money. So master it and it'll become your friend. But you do need to know the rules and the rules are made by Wall Street. So you need somebody who's sort of ex-Wall Street to teach it to you. Um, morning to North Carolina. You guys got any questions? Super happy to to to, to take a couple here. Uh, put them out into the chat. Christopher, you're very kind. Yes, my, my throat is a little on the sore side. Um, Howard, biggest dilemma when to cut losses. Yes, absolutely. And again, I think every single time you get into a position, before you do, you need to write it out. You need to write out, and I know in hindsight that isn't very helpful, but you can start doing it for anything new you do. Write in why you got into it. What are the measurable criteria that you got into it for? So you can tell whether they changed. Say, EV company, how many cars are they selling? What are their gross margins? What is their growth, their revenue growth, you know? And secondly, at what point are you getting out? Is it a movement of the stock price? Is it not hitting a certain price point within a certain time period? What's your investment horizon? Once you've distilled those things down to a piece of paper that you can refer back to, like a little notebook or something, then you no longer have to worry about those things. And it means that emotion won't come and haunt you. Um, and honestly, that's actually exactly what we're going to talk about in the, in the, in the live trading tr uh, webinar, because for traders, it's exactly the same thing. Most traders are terrible at adjusting a losing trade. So we make sure we make all those decisions at the beginning and automate it so that we don't have to have those conversations in our head because we're just not very good at it. Righty-ho, guys. Any other questions? Pop them in the chat. I appreciate um, ginger tea, Thomas, right? That sounds good. I shall um, 
I have been, I've actually pretty much chilled today, which is quite nice. Um, actually, I watched Goldfinger today, which was quite, quite pleasant. Um, nice old Sean Connery uh, Bond film um, with a bit of South of France right here and so on. Uh, do you see a crash? I don't, to be honest, at the moment. I, I just don't. I just think we are in a, a little bit of a Goldilocks situation where the government has bailed us out. There is all this money in money market funds, the debt funds, which with interest rates coming down is going to leave those funds and it's probably going to find its way back into the stock market. We seem to be having an economy that isn't, isn't collapsing. If you believe Goldman's is going to grow 2% next year. And yes, there's a banking crisis looming, but the Fed will definitely bail them out. And uh, they'll likely do that in January or February, I would have thought. And the market's going to shrug it off, probably. So kind of, there's always going to be something that could be unexpected. Don't, don't um, discount that. But other than that, at the moment, it actually looks pretty good. Earnings look pretty good. Growth looks pretty good. Um, when you have a year as good as this one, typically your follow-on year is, is pretty solid. So not a lot to complain about right now. Um, Virginia, you thought this was pre-recorded? No, 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 I, I don't do that. That would be really weird. If I if I put out a live, it's live. Um, otherwise, it's going to be uh, pre-recorded. Um, how was Philippines? Oh, Philippines was glorious, absolutely glorious. It's a uh, yeah, really fun place to go. If you haven't been, it's a fantastic people and lots of parties and um, lots of food and, and that kind of thing. Have you got completely out of your bond play, says Hunter. At the moment, yes. I'm still thinking about whether to find another one, but I haven't quite found one yet. So there's a nice return from it. But given how much yields have come down, it kind of makes me wonder, like, has the sweet spot possibly passed? And would we just be being greedy, <laughs> setting up the same thing again and hoping for the same outcome? So I think I'm probably going more into stocks and real estate this year rather than bonds. And I mean, this year, I mean, 2024. Marianne, I hope your growth stocks are recovering. They, they should be somewhat, right? With rates coming down, hopefully you've got some half decent ones in there and then they will actually start to recover as some of them have. Um, Adam, uh, Merry Christmas to you as well. Do you see inflation coming back, says Ken? I mean, that's the, it's always possible, isn't it? That you're going to get a couple of weeks or a couple of months in a row of higher inflation data and then people start to freak out a little bit and yields pick up and um, possible. But at the moment, I don't know, at the moment we haven't got the data to sort of support it. So you could always speculate that something unexpected will happen. But like what, what would actually cause it? I mean, is it the labor market? Seems to be easing a little bit. 60,000 bankers got fired last year. <laughs> yeah, that might make you smile. Um, not so fun for the guys. And, and, you know, a lot of those guys are like Wells Fargo and stuff. They're not your uh, your Wall Street, um, you know, hedge fund guys. But yeah, 60,000. That's 2007, 2008, I think it was about 150,000, 120,000, something like that. So it's a, it's a significant amount. So there are certainly some aspects of the economy that's slowing down. Um, but that's also because deal making is slow because valuations are high and interest rates are high. So who's gonna who's gonna buy anything, right? Andrea, et nine first impression. I think the concept's a good one. I think it's good to for this is this is a Neo's luxury sedan. It's sort of a Mercedes S class type competitor thing. I think it's a good thing to do from a brand point of view. And in terms of features and tech, I can't say it blew me away. Um, like the suspension thing, for example, I might be wrong on that, but I think Mercedes has the same thing. It's from a supplier. I remember driving an S-Class not about well, quite a few years back, actually, and driving over speed bumps, and I couldn't feel them. And I was like, this is brilliant. Um, you know, speed to your heart's content. Don't do that. But, you know, this technology has been there for a while, I think. Um, so I, I I think it's good. Yes, they have their own chips in and all of that. It's, it's all kind of good. But it, I was kind of hoping for 
I don't know what I was hoping for, but I was kind of hoping to, for them to blow me away a little bit more than, than than they have with it. But let's see what it comes out as and what it looks like and, and if it comes out on time. But I still think from a branding point of view, it is good to have a flagship, like premium flagship that kind of defines the brand uh, and then go down from there. So I, I, I do like the concept of it. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see what it looks like. Eighty nine will be a hundred thousand dollars. I'm not sure the profit margins. I don't know. It depends on how many they make. Um, making very premium cars is also quite expensive at low numbers. So I don't think they're doing this as a revenue or as a margin boost. I think this is largely a a marketing boost. I, that, that's my feeling. I could be wrong on that. Any other questions, folks? Any other questions? Do you want to have a look at the pre-market while we're here? Let me show it to you. There we go. This is pre-market. Pretty flat stuff, really. I mean, it's also going to be a pretty low volume couple of days until early, early Jan, um, which also means that a big buy or a big sell order can actually move the market. So you can get quite big moves. But at the moment, NVIDIA is probably the biggest thing here, which is up, and Tesla up 0.6%. Um, and everything else very, very, very muted here this morning, which is, you know, nothing wrong with that. Let's have a look at QQQ. Free market. Yeah, you can see that, right? Light volume is just sort of dancing sideways to a Christmas tune. Um, nothing particularly to worry about. Will, that's very kind of you. Thank you. CYTK, what is that? CYTK. Kito Kinetics. So I, I don't know anything about that. But it's up 60% today. So they must have done something right. I would have thought. Anybody know why? Mm. Well, they've done some positive results of a heart disease treatment. Statistically significant, clinically meaningful increase. I, 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 I mean, no idea what they're doing. Uh, working on some drug, apparently. So, obstructive hyperthropic cardiomyopathy. Myopathy. I mean, honestly, if this was Chinese, I'd probably understand it better. But yes, the stock market likes it. This is, by the way, why I don't invest in sort of speculative drug companies because, I mean, this is a good thing, but it can also go the other way. Novartis mentioned. You think it's a pump and dump? Also entirely possible. PayPal, it's just sort of consolidating here, which is which is good. That's kind of what we're looking at. So, uh, you know, fl flattish day today. If you look at the moving averages, they're still sitting. Yeah, 64 is sort of the one to crack right now. We haven't managed that in the last week. So once they do, I think then you have a shot. Well, you then have this this resistance here, 65 probably, and then the next one above that is about 67. So it's a it's going to be a bit of a slog for PayPal to recover, but you know it's moving moving in the right direction. Righty ho. So guys, I shall um I shall preserve my my voice somewhat. Um, come and join me literally in, in 30 minutes, uh, somewhat refreshed uh, and restored. And um, I will walk you through the exact steps and we'll do it together and I'll show it to you and I'll teach it to you how we trade one stock, three rules, how we can automate the whole thing. And it's going to be fun. It's going to be live. Uh, come and check it out. FelixFriends.org slash webinar. That's where you got to sign up. It won't be here on YouTube. And I appreciate you tuning in. We'll be back in uh, full force tomorrow and um and friday of course and then guess what next year next week is 2024 so uh make your plans make your wishes and um i appreciate you tuning in take care